Hey yo, what's good everybody? Welcome back to another episode of your favorite MMA sports betting channel, Bros Talk MMA. I'm your host, Utica, undeniably the illest cat around, aka Mr. Make This Pick Real Quick, aka the Parlay Prince. I'm here with my bro host extraordinaire. You know who it is. It's Ray Bucks. It's Trackle Jordan. It's the No, I didn't hit the parlay last week, so we're gonna let it we're, let it, we're not gonna we're gonna let it ride. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, that's me. Sorry. That's all I got for you. Come on, man. You can't have the motherfucking shades on and come in like that. We gotta have you a little right. more little more enthusiasm than that. You right. I did go 7-4. and four. It is Black Nostradamus, Black Jesus, Black Moses, and the Parlay God. There we go. That's what I like to hear. All right, y'all. Yeah, uh, last week we did, you know, we came back. Definitely, bro did well. I went six and five on the night. So, you know, I think he's up on me now. Eight fights. We'll have some graphics here. Um, but we'll probably go into that later on. Right now, we're here to cover this weekend's pay-per-view card, UFC 303. Uh, a funny, whimsical card that's had all kinds of dropouts and withdrawals and you know shuffling of fighters and uh you know but it brings us to this saturday we have the light heavyweight championship on the line we got alex Pereira going up against yuri prohashka uh we got alex Pereira coming and saving another card thanks buddy and uh this uh card is actually you know pretty nice i want to say it's quite stacked but I would say that, you know, it's definitely got some name power on it. Uh, the co-main event's going to be good. And, uh, yeah, we got some undercard fights that are going to be good as well. Um, it's going to be a 13-fight card. Getting into the first fight, we got a bantamweight bout. We got Ricky Simone going up against Vinicius Oliveira. We got Simone coming in at 8-4 and four in the UFC, 20-5 and five overall, and 3-2 and two in their last five fights. We got Oliveira, they're 1-0 in the UFC, 20-3 overall, and 4-1 in their last fight, fi last five fights. Uh, I'm going to be going with Oliveira in this one. I just believe that they're the more dangerous fighter and striker. Um, may not be as good in the grappling department uh, as Simone, but uh, I think that they may have good enough defense to keep it on the feet, and uh, that's where they do their best work. Um, Simone, great wrestler, um, but they tend to fade, and uh, especially against uh, great strikers who are able to, uh, you know, stuff those takedowns, keep it on the feet, or at least get up quickly from a takedown. Um, I mean, I just feel like if uh, Oliveira is able to, you know, exercise some good ground defense, um, I believe that they can end this fight, you know, somewhere in the uh, second or third round. Um, but if Simone is able to get their grappling going, then it could potentially be a long night for Oliveira. I agree with you. Uh, Ricky Simone is a pure wrestler. Oliveira is a pure striker. Um, I wanted to go with my wrestling camp. Wanted to go with Ricky Simone. Um, but Ricky Simone's last opponent was a striker. He had problems with him. Um, so generally I would take the wrestler over the striker, uh, in this instance, I'm going to have to go with the striker. I'm going to have to go with Oliveira. Uh, and Ricky Simone's on a two fight slide right now. Um, and it's really hard, I think, uh, especially in this sport to come back from those, uh, multi fight slides. Um, and Oliveira's just a, an up and coming young and hungry, uh, fighter. Um, I don't see any reason why he can't get this one done on the feet. There we go. There we go. All right, moving on, we got a flyweight bout. We got Carlos Hernandez going up against Ray Ceruya. Um, We got Hernandez 2-2 two two in the UFC, 9-3 overall, and 3-2 and in their last five fights. We got Ceruya. They are making their UFC debut 9-0 and overall. And uh, I think I'm going to go with Ceruya in this fight. Um, even though they're making their debut, I just feel like um, the Japan prospects that are coming in uh, are definitely staking a claim in the UFC. And I just don't see this being much different. 
Um, Hernandez doesn't got any hands. Um, Saruya does have hands. Um, and can grapple. Um, I don't necessarily know if uh Hernandez has the edge in the grappling, but I just don't believe that uh they'll be able to get that grappling going. Therefore, they'll be on the feet and eventually get caught or just pointed to death. But um, yeah, I'll be going with Saruya. Saruya is the pick for sure. Um, as you said, Hernandez has no hands. Um, and and Saruya is a, a active. Uh, striker. Um, he's one of those uh, road to UFC fighters. Um, so, you know what I mean? He's had a, a solid road making it um, to the UFC. Um, hoping he does not get fraud checked by Hernandez. I don't think he will. I, I don't uh, think uh, Carlos Hernandez is a, is a real uh, good fraud checker, so to speak. Um, so, I'm going to go with the uh, Cerulea, uh to win this fight. Um, also standing up. All right. Moving on to the heavyweight division, we got long-standing veteran of the UFC, Andre Arlovsky going up against Martin Boudet. Um, we got Arlovsky coming in at 23-17 and 17 with one no contest overall. I'm sorry, in the UFC. And then they're 34-23 and 23 with two no contests overall. Uh, two and three in their last five fights. We got Boudet coming in, 4-1 in the UFC, 13-2 overall, and 4-1 in their last five fights. I'm going to be going with Boudet in this fight. I just believe that they're, the, they're going to be the younger fighter by seven years. Uh, they're going to be... They're going to be the more powerful striker just based upon where them and Arlovsky are at in their careers. Um, they got a durable chin leading up to their first KO loss. Um, but, uh, outside of that, the striking can get a little slight sloppy, uh, as the fight wears on. Uh, so as long as he can get this done early, that'd be nice. But if this does go into the third round, hopefully he's already put himself up ahead enough, uh, that he just can, you know, kind of just, uh, I guess just ugh, his way through the third round until, you know, a a, into a decision. Um, Arlovsky, I mean, they're just, they're 45 right now. Um, they are the more, uh, experienced and seasoned striker. Um, they can grapple, but I just don't see that happening in this fight. That'd just be a quick way to zap your energy. Um, but they definitely got some good, uh, cardio and, and a decent chin, you know, at, for this stage in their career. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to be going with Boudet in this fight. I've got to – okay, let's give uh, flowers to Orlovsky. Uh, Orlovsky has been in the UFC for 20-plus years. Um, he is no undoubtedly a UFC Hall of Famer. Um, he is one, one of the greatest to have ever done it. Um, hats off to him. But that being said – He's on a three-fight skid, um, and he's 45 years old. I mean, I don't think it's so much the cardio anymore, but the power and the speed has definitely left him. Uh, so I think Boudet gets this one done. Definitely. All right, moving on. We got a strawweight bout in the women's division. We got Michelle Watterson Gomez going up against Jillian Robertson. Um, we got Watterson Gomez coming in at six and eight in the UFC, eighteen and twelve overall, and one and four in their last five fights. Um, Robertson is ten and six in the UFC, thirteen and eight overall, and they are three and two in their last five fights. I'm gonna be going with Robertson in this fight. Uh, they're gonna have the edge in the grappling department. I, uh, the only thing that concerns me is that. If they're not able to get the grappling going, you know, they tend to break at that point, and they don't have that great of hands. Uh, Michelle Watterson Gomez, uh, I mean, they're going to be the older fighter by, like, nine years. Uh, they're, they, can, they can grapple, but they primarily like to keep things on the feet, so they'll have the edge and the striking, but they're just, you know, I just don't think that at this stage in the game – 
um, they'll be able to keep Robertson off them. Um, and I just feel like they're part of like the old guard and the game's starting to pass them up. So I see them running into their fifth straight loss. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be going with Robertson in this fight. Yeah, and I think he said it all. Fifth, or they're, they've got on a four loss uh, slide right now. Um, and I think uh, Watterson uh, Gomez is, you know what I mean, was a good fighter. Uh, maybe even a great fighter at one point in her lifetime. Um, but life is getting in the way of her UFC career um, with kids and marriage and, and all those things. Um, I just don't think she um, has the ability to spend the kind of time that she may have um, in the past in the gym um, the way that maybe Jillian Robertson is. Uh, now, not that Jillian Robertson is a crazy great fighter. I think she just has a little more dedication and is putting a little bit more time on the pads, in the weight room, um, and on the mat. Um, that being said, this will be a snooze fest. Uh, this is when I'll go grab some more beers. Um, but Jillian Robinson will get this one done. Definitely. And a unanimous decision. Definitely. Okay. Um, moving back to the men's division and the bantamweight uh, division. <laughs> what a dumbass. Anyway, uh, we got Peyton Talbot going up against Giannis Gamori. Um, we got Talbot 2-0 and in the UFC. 8 and 0 overall. We got Gamori 0 and 1 in the UFC and a 12 and 2 overall. Um they're going to be 4 and 1 in their last 5 fights. I'm going to be going with Talbot. Uh they're just uh they're well-rounded young fighter, uh better uh striker than grappler, I would say. Um they got some holes in their grappling game which, you know, I guess Gamori they they could go in here grappling, but from what I saw in their last fight, they're probably going to want to keep this standing up. Um, they lost their last fight in a weird way. Um, they took a a body shot really bad that uh, prompted the referee to just stop the fight, even though they were still more than ready to keep going. So it looked as though they were still going to be on their way to a decision loss, but you never know, so I don't really know what to expect from Gamori in this fight, uh, which kind of raises some concern because Talbot's still, you know, like young prospect uh, who showed once once again some holes in their game against some lower level competition in Nick Aguirre. Um, but they do have some cardio. It's early in their career, so I do believe that Talbot's gonna uh, get this one done. But uh, who you got, Talbot or Gamori? I think I've got to go with Talbot. Um, I think Talbot has uh, more poise, um, more patience. Um, and, and when he is in tough situations, um, I don't think he ever looks rushed. or um, You don't see a panic in his eyes or in his face or in his body language. Um, yes, do I think there's some holes in his grappling? Of course. But with those holes in his grappling and his takedown defense as well, um, he works through them. He gets his way out of them. He thinks through them. Um, and he does have some exciting strikes. Um, he has some exciting angles where he's able to strike from. Um, and I think this is a layup fight from the UFC because he is a young prospect who does have some exciting uh, aspects to his game. Um Primarily his striking. Um, and again, you know how I always go. If there's not a blueprint to beat him yet, Perfect. you know what I mean? I've got to go with that guy uh, until somebody figures it out. So uh, Peyton Talbot's my guy. Definitely, definitely. Moving up a weight class, uh, we're going to be in the featherweight division. We got Charles Air Jordan going up against John Silva. We got Jordan coming in uh six and six with one draw in the UFC. Fifteen seven with fifteen and seven with that one draw overall. And then two and three in their last five fights. We got Silva one and oh in the UFC, twelve and two overall, and they're currently riding a nine fight win streak. I'm gonna be going with Silva in this fight. They're gonna be the more dangerous striker. Um, they can grapple, but I'm sure they're just going to be looking to keep this on the feet. Um, they're always looking for the finish, pushing the pace. Uh, 
Cardio is really the only concern I have just based upon the fact that I don't think it's really been tested because they end fights, you know? So, um, we got Jordan. Uh, they're, they're the more well-rounded of the two, I would say. Um, definitely the, the more experienced one is terms in terms of like UFC competition. Um, they're going to be durable. Uh, They'll have an edge in the grappling department if it goes to the ground. Um, but their cardio is pretty bad. You know, I'm sure that they've worked on it. And, like, I think that, you know, um, they can go three rounds. But if it gets to the third round, uh, that it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, Jordan's going to be the one out in front. So I'm going to be going with Silva in this fight, uh, probably by KO. There you go. Um, I got to agree with the Silva pick. Um, I'm not necessarily thinking KO. I'm not sure yet, though. Um, Charles Jordan, um, my only worry on him beating Silva is that with his experience, he comes in with a better game plan and literally just kind of slows the, the fight down, makes it boring, uh, lays all over Silva. Um, to just slow him down because Silva's obviously the more active fighter, the more active striker. Um, but Charles Jordan, through his career, I'm sure he's come up against that and uh, he knows how to slow down a fighter like that. Hopefully, that's not what happens in this fight and uh, uh, John, Sh John Silva is able to tee off on him. Um, if he's able to tee off on him, you're probably right about a KO. I don't know if I can pick a round, but I think John Silva can get this one done on the feet. All right. Uh, staying in the featherweight division, uh, we got Cub Swanson going up against Andre Philly. Um, you got Cub Swanson, 14-9 in the UFC, 29-13 overall, and 3-2 and in their last five fights. We got Philly, 11-10 in the UFC, 23 and 11 overall and two and three in their last five fights. I'm going to be going with Swanson. I just think that they're the experienced, gritty, hardening veteran of the UFC. Um, I mean, them and Philly got, you know, about the same, you know, UFC experience, but I just feel like Swanson has just been in there with some of the best of the best. Uh, Philly's definitely been in there with some greats as well, but uh, I just feel like Swanson is just kind of on another level. Only thing that's really not in their favor is their age, um, which they're not much older than Philly, uh, especially when you talk about like UFC years and uh, in, in terms of like the, the wear and tear that comes with fighting at that level. Um, but still, I just believe that um, they're going to be the cleaner striker, more powerful, uh, more durable, and they got some uh, proven cardio. Um, <clears throat> like I said, it's just the age that's my concern. You got Philly, like I said, an equally, uh, I would say, experienced veteran of the UFC. Dangerous striker, but not really powerful, in my opinion. And uh, I would say at this point, their chin is more in question than Swanson. And um, they, can, they can grapple, but I feel like uh, they're going to... This is gonna be a feat. Uh, there's, this is gonna be a fight primarily on the feet. Um, Philly's cardio can be in question, so I'm gonna be going with uh, Swanson in this one. I've got to disagree. Um, Swanson's a 40 year old man. That's a six year age difference. Um, I understand uh, your take on the fact that they've kind of both been in the UFC and been through uh, a similar amount of fights. Um, I think Swanson's been through some wars, though, uh, that maybe Philly hasn't been through. Now, Philly has been chin-checked, and Philly's chin is deteriorating. Um, do I believe that Cub Swanson's going to be the next one uh, to test it? I don't think so. Um, I think that Philly does have a great fight IQ, um, as long as he's able to kind of just guard that chin. Uh, in addition to that, uh, he's a little bit taller than Swanson um, by about three inches, um, and he's got about four inches of reach on him. So if he can hold distance, then he doesn't really need to worry too much about getting knocked out of, knocked out by Swanson, but he's got to be able to hold that distance. Um, if he doesn't and he lets Swanson get in close on some Tyson shit, probably going to be a wrap for him. Um, but I think Philly takes this. 
uh, to the dark water, third round or more. Um, when I say more, I mean decision. Um, and that's how the fight goes. All right. Moving up to the middleweight division, we got Joe Pfeiffer going up against Mark Andre Barrio. Um, we got Pfeiffer three and one in the UFC, twelve and three overall, and four and one in their last five fights. We got Barrio. They're going to be five, six, and one in the UFC, or with, with that being a no contest. 16-7 with that one no contest overall. And uh three and two in their last five fights. I'm gonna be going with Pfeiffer in this fight. I just think that they're the younger fighter. Uh they're a Dana White guy. So to be honest, I, I kind of think that this is like a you know uh a, a comeback scenario kind of fight, you know, something that they're kind of setting him up with so that you know he can uh put himself back in position to, you know, uh be in uh the favor of the fans and stuff like that. Um, because I'm sure he made a lot of people, you know, angry with his last outing. So <laughs> I'm sure he's eager to, you know, get back in the win column. They're a dangerous striker, definitely more powerful. They may even have the edge in grappling in this fight as well. Um, decent cardio, durable. And uh, like I said, I just, yeah, I think this is a fight for them to win. Um, Barrio, they're going to be the older fighter by seven years. Um, less powerful in my opinion, even though they got a lot of KOs on their record. I just don't believe at this stage in their career that they're, they're, I, I feel like they're more of a power, uh, point fighter. Um, no grappling really, you know, I, I, and I would say, like I said, like in comparison to Piper and, uh, the cardio at this stage in their career could be in question in my opinion. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to be going with Piper. <laughs> I've got to disagree with you. I've got to go with Barrio. Um, I think you are correct in your um, in your breakdown that uh, Piper is a, a, a company man in the fact that I, I think the UFC wants to see him come up. Um, he is the younger fighter. Um, he is an all-or-nothing fighter um, and an exciting fighter. Uh, problem is, is, I don't think he has a high fight IQ. I think he has a low fight IQ. I think he's uh, a little reckless <laughs> at times, too reckless. And um, I think Barrio is going to pick that apart, um, being the smarter fighter, being the more seasoned fighter. Um, also, uh, Barrio has a few more routes to victory. Not the greatest grappler, but a better better grappler than uh, Joe Pfeiffer. Um, and uh, I think... Uh, Piper's Piper's gonna beat himself in this particular match, unfortunately, because he's just gonna fight a little too reckless, and uh, he's gonna go on a two fight slide. Okay. Moving on to the welterweight division, we got and also start of the main card. This is the. Oh, How about you just main do card it? doesn't sound good. It's we got a welterweight bout between Ian Machado Gary going up against Michael Venom Page. We got Machado Gary coming in 7 and 0 in the UFC, 14 and 0 overall. Um we got Page 1 and 0 in the UFC, 22 and 2 overall and they're 4 and 1 in their last 5 fights. I'm going to be going with Page in this fight. I think that they are a uh, very good unorthodox striker. Uh, durable, um, got some good cardio. They're gonna be the older fighter, which I guess would be my only concern in this fight. But uh, you got Machado Gary. They're undefeated. Definitely, probably the 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 cleaner striker of the two. Um, haven't been KO'd, so yeah, they're they're durable. Uh, can grapple, but I think that they're gonna wanna try and strike in this particular bout. Um, they got some good cardio as well, but I just don't think they're as good as they think they are. And I think that this is going to be a step up in competition, in my opinion, for them. So, uh, I'm looking forward to see, uh, if Michael Page is the one that can crack the code on this one. I don't think it's going to be him. I don't think he's going to crack the code. Again, my guy's undefeated. Uh, in addition to him being undefeated, he's 11 years younger than, uh, MVP. 
uh, Michael Venom Page. Um, again, this is one of those ones where Michael Venom Page, don't get me wrong, is a very dangerous fighter. Um, a great striker, one of the best in this weight class, possibly. Um, that being said, lower fight IQ than, uh, than Machado. Um, I just, I don't see a way he comes away with the victory on this one. Um, cause I think that Machado is going to take him into the deep water. I think there's a little bit of a worry about his, uh, cardio, um, in that like late third round. Um, and I think that's where, uh, Ian Machado Gary is able to, uh, take this one. All right. All right. Disagreed on like what? Three, three straight? It's like three in a row. Okay. Well. Gary, Baru, Feely, everything else, we're good. All right. Well, maybe best picks win. Absolutely. All right. <clears throat> Moving back to the women's division and the bantamweights. Oh, uh, we got Myra Buena Silva going up against Macy Chasson. Oh, um, we got Buena Silva, five and three in the UFC. 10 3 and 1 no contest overall uh and 3 1 and 1 no with that one no contest in the last five fights also with that one no contest taking place in the UFC that was a fight that was overturned due to uh some uh Adderall or something that they were to like ADHD medicine or something like that that they were taking um but anyway uh, we got Shasong coming in seven and three in the UFC, nine and three overall, and three and two in their last five fights. I'm gonna be going with Shasong in this fight. I just believe that they'll be the better strike. They're gonna definitely have the edge in striking. Um, they could grapple, but I just think that they should keep this on the feet and just you know exercise good ground defense. Um, they're gonna be the taller, longer fighters, so definitely gonna give. Bueno Silva something to wrap on to, but I think that they can also use that to their advantage to keep them at distance as long as uh their striking's crisp. Um Bueno Silva, they they're gonna be uh the better grappler, uh, but they have no hands and really have nothing to offer once uh they realize that their their ground game isn't gonna be able to get going. So um both of them can I, I would say actually this is more in Buena Silva's case uh, could break mentally, so uh, yeah I also think that's gonna play a factor. Um, I'm gonna be going with Chasson in this fight, most definitely by a decision. Yeah, this will be another. Uh, it's not gonna be an end to this or a finish or anything like that. Uh, it's two what are the 115 pound women. Or 35 pound women, 135 pound women lightly throwing punches at each other, uh, constantly wrapping each other up and um, giving me a chance to go and get another beer. Um, but that being said, uh, I think while I'm uh, going to grab a tasty beverage, that uh, Macy Chasson will uh, edge it out and uh, take it to a decision victory. Um, I might even call this a splitty. Um, just because of the, it, it just, there's not going to be a lot of work there. Um, I think, uh, Macy Chesson will win and it'll be very evident, but just because of the fact that it's just going to be so boring, maybe one of the judges takes a little nap, uh, in between rounds, uh, or during maybe the second round or something like that, that they might have missed it and, uh, they might accidentally put a mark over in, uh, the Buena Silva side. So, uh, that's how that fight's going to go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Moving on to uh, men's division in the light heavyweight. Um, we got Anthony Smith going up against Roman Delize. This is a funny situation because this fight originally was supposed to be two completely different people. But then through a series of uh, withdrawals and uh, suspensions, uh, we ended up with Anthony Smith versus Roman Belize as opposed to Jamal Hill versus Khalil Roundtree, which then turned into Jamal Hill versus Carlos Olberg. And then fucking that turned into Carlos Olberg versus Anthony Smith. And now we got Anthony Smith versus Roman Belize. So uh, <laughs> we got Anthony Smith coming in 13-9 and nine in the UFC. 
37 and 19 overall, two and three in their last five fights. We got the Leeds A coming in six and three in the UFC, 12 and three overall, and three and two in their last five fights. I'm gonna be going with Smith. I just believe that they're the more experienced uh, fighter and they're gonna be the cleaner, better striker. Uh, they're more well-rounded. I, I wouldn't say they're more well-rounded, but I would just say that they're a very well-rounded fighter that can grapple if necessary. But if I was them, I would, tr I would try to keep this on the feet. Um, they got okay cardio, and their chin is a concern, but I don't think it'll... It, it, they they could definitely, definitely get clipped in this fight by the leads they... Um, that's what I'll say about the Leeds is they're definitely the more powerful striker. Uh, they kind of are a sneaky good grappler. Um, but it's really just, like I said, if, if it goes down there, then, then I guess, you know, they're comfortable down there, but they're definitely more of a, they're primarily a striker. Um, they do become sloppy though, as the fight wears on and they kind of just have a limited, uh, arsenal in their uh strikes so it's really just you know uh lunging you know power strikes especially as the fight goes on so i'm gonna be going with smith to either win this by decision or they could pull off you know some sort of uh crafty veteran move uh most likely a, a submission of some type of sort so yeah i'll be going with smith i agree uh with the smith pick um, couple things. Uh, Smith is he gets real sloppy with his striking. Uh, in the later rounds for sure, but it's kind of almost like a um, I don't want to say distracting, but like a like he lulls you into the fact that like his hands aren't quite up and he's not quite throwing crazy punches, and so you get close to him and then he's able to catch you in a crazy submission. Uh, it's kind of what happened in his last fight. Um, even though it was early on. Like, he kind of was throwing sloppy punches. The guy <laughs> went in there, and then he was able to uh, uh, give the man um, a guillotine, a guillotine uh, submission. Homeboy tried to slam him or something like that. Right, but he was looking sloppy. I thought he looked sloppy, at least. Anyway, that being said, um, he we are fighting at 205 pounds. Uh, Delizze, his last fight, he was fighting at 185 pounds. Um, so he's going up in weight um, by 20 uh, plus pounds or 20 plus pounds. Um, that being said, uh, the bigger fighter is going to be Anthony Smith. Anthony Smith is also uh, had a little bit more time to train for this particular uh, event, um, a little bit more than uh, Delice did um, because he was uh, scheduled to fight somebody else, as he talked about all the different cancellations and, 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 and pullouts and whatever being said. Um, but I also think that uh, Anthony Smith just has a, a great uh, fight IQ, very high fight IQ. Um, I think he's more of a jack of all trades. I don't think he's a great at any one uh, particular uh, move or uh, um, uh, style as far as uh, standing, grappling, or wrestling. Um, he's just uh, pretty decent at everything. Um, and that's why I believe that he will be able to, uh, take down Delice because Delice is just, um, a berserker. Um, he just goes in there, tries to get it done. Um, and unfortunately I think he'll put himself in a bad position. And at that point, Anthony Smith will take a uh, full advantage. All right. Moving on to the co-main event of the evening, we have... A featherweight bout between Brian Ortega going up against Diego Lopez. We've got Ortega coming in 8-3 and one no contest in the UFC. 16-3 uh, in that one no contest overall. Two and three in their last five fights. We got Lopez coming in 3-1 and one in the UFC. 24-6 and six overall. And uh, they're 4-1 and one in their last five fights. I'm going to be going with Lopez in this fight. Um, I just believe that uh, they're very well-rounded. They're going to be the more dangerous of the two in the striking department. Um, they fight to win and finish. Uh, they push the pressure. 
that I would say is probably the only thing that concerns me is their pacing, is that they're going to be going so hard that there's the potential uh, that they could leave themselves open and or, um, you know, zap their energy a little early on, making for, you know, a more labored third round um, where somebody like Ortega could definitely take advantage because they're very well rounded in their own right. They're going to have the edge in the grappling, so they could definitely, you know, take this to the ground. Um, Lopez has good ground game. I just don't know if it's on the level of Ortega, who has been able to um, subdue strikers and, you know, get them to the ground and then finish it there. So um, they're going to be definitely... Like, in the striking department, they're not necessarily a powerful striker to me. And I don't think that they can hang with Lopez on the feet like that. Um, they're, they've shown to be very durable and take a beating. But I just don't think that they can uh, hang with Lopez in the uh, striking department. And they, the less active fighter, uh, if you look at their, like, last three fights, um, it's, there's been some time in between each one. I'm going to be going with Lopez. I think they're going to probably get this done by KO or maybe sneaky submission if it ends up going to the ground. Who you got? I think I've got to go with Lopez too. Um, I, I just think he's 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 a, a better fighter in every sense of the word or, or sense of the phrase. Um, I really don't see a way that uh, uh, Ortega is going to win this one. Um Diego Lopez, uh, obviously we know him a little bit more for his striking, but he's not a, a, a slouch in the BJJ and the submissions. Um, he does have quite a bit of those. Um, and and he's just an active fighter on the come up. He's got a three-fight win streak that he's working on. Um, he's one of the main coaches at Lobo Gym. I, I think he's just the next fighter. He's, a, he's the up-and-coming fighter in this division. Um, I think he's he's looking to get this fight done, and then he's looking for a either top <coughs> top contender fight right after this, um, or even possibly a title belt after this. And I think that's where he's at, and I think that's where his goal and uh, his trajectory is. Uh, so I take Lopez. Um, I'm not picking. I, I think this is just a finished fight. Somehow it will be finished before uh, all the rounds are up, but I don't think... Um, I can pick whether it's going to be a submission or it's going to be a KO. All right. <clears throat> All right. Uh, moving into the main event of the evening. Let Bruce Buffer do that, bro. Just, just cut. Come on. We don't need it. We could just put it in post. You better. You could have post him. You know what I mean? He's an editor. No? Kill Joy. I don't, I don't know if I can find that. I'll see if I can find it. But if not, I'm pretty okay with, with just doing this since we can't do the fucking table, can't do no fucking knee slaps, you know, that one shit we tried looked crazy. You didn't say nothing the last one when I did just that, and you were you went right into the main event. Now you're over here hating, but it's all good. I ain't tripping. Anyway... We got the light heavyweight title on the line. Once again, uh, Alex Pereira coming in here, uh, saving another card. Uh, originally, we had a... Like a band supposed to. A 170-pound uh, bout between Conor McGregor going up against Michael Chandler. Unfortunately, McGregor injured his toe. And had to pull out of the fight. So we probably won't see that fight happening for maybe another four weeks or so. Or potentially it could be Ch uh, Conor McGregor going up against somebody completely different. You know, because Chandler needs to fight. Chandler, yeah, he's, he's kind of tired of waiting. But that remains to be seen. Um, But like I said, we have the light heavyweight title on the line. We have Alex Pereira coming in to fight a rematch. Against Yuri Prohashka. Um, we got Pereira coming in 7-1 and one in the UFC. 10-2 and two overall. And 4-1 and one in their last five fights. We got Prohashka coming in. They are 4-1 and one in the UFC. 
31 and 4 with one draw overall, and they are 4 and 1 in their last five fights. I'm going to go with Pereira in this fight. I just believe that they are a super powerful striker, a super experienced kickboxer is their base. But um, they're learning to grapple as they go. And I believe that they're at least just like, in my opinion, they're, 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 they're focused on uh, takedown defense and just trying to either... Uh, um, oh, damn, I forget what the fuck that word. Stuff the takedown or get right back up and not accept the takedown if they actually are to get taken off their feet. Um, but... The one thing I would say that uh, scares me is their defense. They kind of keep their hands low, and I think they even kind of rely on their chin to, you know, just kind of, they, they just take a shot. But it has been shown that, you know, he can be laid out and knocked out. Uh, so I would say that's my only concern. But on the other hand, he does have one-touch KO power, which he did display in this first fight against Prohoshka where Prohoshka kind of had him uh up against the fence was uh giving him different looks and uh I think Pereira was having trouble figuring out the striking of Prohoshka but then you know he just kind of relied on the chin set that to the side uh applied his his offense and eventually caught Prohoshka put him down it looked like a little bit of a early stoppage, but even Prohoshka uh, at the end of the fight said that, you know, he, you know, had been uh, put down and the, the, the referee was um, justified in their stoppage. Later on did say that he felt like it was a little bit early, but it, it and it was, the fight could have went on for a little bit longer, but it isn't to say that it wouldn't have just ended a little bit later as well. So I'm going to be going with uh, Pereira. Um, Prohoshka is a dangerous striker, super unorthodox, always looking for the finish. But uh, they're a reckless striker, and their defense is a little bit meh, which is why they even got caught in the last fight. They were kind of just only offense at that point and then left the opening. Pereira caught him. Uh, these are things that our concerns but also what makes him great i'm really looking forward to a good fight but i will be going with prayer in this one this is going to be a great fight um <clears throat> this is i mean I've, I've heard other uh other people say that um you mean maybe the uh um the, the lopez fight will be the best fight on this card or the most entertaining fight on this card i've heard the gary fight Maybe the most entertaining fight on this card. At the end of the day, this is the fight. This is the fight I want to see. Um, I think uh, Yuri Prohaska is, is no slouch by any means. Um, really uh, put it on uh, Pereira last time. Uh, I think Pereira had a great game plan going in. Gave him a lot of leg kicks early, um, which was able to kind of slow him down. Uh, you know what I mean? Just kind of work your way from the bottom to the top, and 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 that's what got him this win, or his last win. Um, obviously, I think Prohaska is going to have a, a brand new game plan coming in, uh, which worries me a little bit going against Pereira, uh, or Pereira, or however the fuck you're supposed yeah. to say that name. Anyway, he could come in grappling this time around, which he'll definitely have the edge in that department. But absolutely, like Pereira is. He's been showing like promise and having a good ground defense. Absolutely. Um, so I think it's exciting. Um, I think I'm still gonna go with Pereira. Uh, I think he still takes us down. I think he's one of the greatest UFC fighters we've seen uh, in in this uh, decade. Uh, I think he may continue to keep being that. Um, it's going to be a great fight. Um, this is going to be a fight to watch. This is an edge of the seat kind of thing. Um, I think there will be a finish. I think uh, Pieta will, will finish um, him. Um, obviously, it's going to be a KO. It's going to be striking because um, that's his, his bag. Um, just because he's such an unorthodox striker. It's not the kind of striking you would teach in an MMA gym or in a... Uh, um, 
in any gym, to be honest with you. Uh, so it's also hard to defend. Um, but nothing against uh, Para um, Yuri. Uh, another great fighter. This is, this is going to be great. Like, I can't wait for this fight to go down uh, this Saturday. Um, super excited to watch it. Definitely, definitely. Um, well, yeah, so that concludes our picks and predictions portion of this show. Um, going into parlays real quick, I'm going to just give you a quick three-piece parlay because, uh, to be honest, um, there's a lot of good matchups and what-ifs, you know, on this card. So, uh, even coming up with these three was a little tough, but... I'm going to give you all a little quick three-piece parlay. Um, I'm going to go with Boudet, Robertson, and Anthony Smith. Um, I wanted to go with the spicy pick, but to be honest, I would, going with Peyton Talbot doesn't really render a lot of uh, value. So I'm just going to stick with the three because even saying that, they're – I'm not completely sold on Talbot, so yeah, I'm just I'm comfortable with this three piece. What you got in the parlay department? The parlay guy does have a three, a four, and a five pick parlay. Oh shit. Uh these are some late uh entries. This is the late edition. I will say that. Okay. Uh, Chasson. Boudet. And Suruya. Um, that's my three pick. That's my base pick. My spicy Freaking pick. Spicy. I'm going to add Pieta as my four. For my super spicy pick at five. Oliveira. Yeah, those are some spicy picks. Definitely. All right. But you hear it here first. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. As we went over this card, uh, I got more excited about it and realized, yeah, this is definitely a really good card on paper. And I'm looking forward to, you know, watching this. Um. So yeah. With that being said, uh, just want to send a quick shout out to everybody that's been watching. Salute to y'all. Appreciate you. Um, make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, and share the channel. Um, make sure you follow us on IG at Bros Talk MMA. You can follow my bro here at R One Dot Mason, and you can follow me at Utica underscore SME. Also, uh, if you want to reach out to us, uh, whether it be for interviews or just for any sort of type of potential, you know, like extended content or, you know, just Collabs. want to get in touch with us, make sure you hit us up at brostalkmma303 at gmail.com. Um, we look forward to sharing some uh, things with y'all uh, here in the upcoming weeks. And then also, um, we have UFC Denver coming up July 13th. We'll be in the building. Absolutely. You know, so we're definitely going to have something special for y'all for that one. And then, um, yeah. I mean, I think that that's, that, that, that's pretty much about it. Yeah, I got to uh, possibly have something big coming up on our next episode. We've got to do a little bit of research, but... Uh... I think there's something coming up. Oh, some some claims to fame. I think there's you know what I mean. There's some things you know what I mean. Like right. some things. So, you know what I mean. We All gotta right. we gotta figure out. All right. All right. Well, uh, until then, uh, we wish y'all the best of luck this weekend. Um, happy betting. And until the next time, this has been another episode of Bros Talk MMA. I'm your host, Utica, undeniably the illest cat around, a.k.a. Mr. Make This Pick Real Quick, a.k.a. The Parlay Prince. I'm here with my bro host, Extraordinary. Hand me my belt, give me my crown. Until the next time, we out.
<laughs> That's what's up.